So I got Henry here. My buddy. And we're going to be doing his house today because he's Brian, got a lot of you? problems. I'm good, bro. Let's go inside and take a look at this. Got some landscaping going on. So, yeah, a mess. Well, it's a pretty mess in a minute. All right, so I'm going to get my booties on. Oh, you're like a um, sergeant, huh? Yeah, because the thing is, we're walking on lawns, and if you have a doggy and we step on the poopy, you know, we don't want to drag it into the house. So we're going to go in, and we're going to take a look at this. And of course, if you got a floor like this, everything will be seen. Yeah, my wife is going to be very happy. <laughs> so where's your kitchen? Let's take a look at that first. All right. So, All right. This is the regular kitchen. Right. You have food over there, and you have it. Uh, all right, so you've got all your appliances. Um, so what we'll do is, I do a complete inspection. So what we're looking down here for is, here's everything that an insect needs. He's got access to water right up here, and you got the sink. You got harborage. You got a place to hide. So he's really close proximity to water, and we'll know what kind of problems we're having because we can usually spot it. So what we're looking in here for is evidence of any problem. Um, so the roaches can go into this mess? Yeah, so if you look back here, Eric, see where the, see where the pipes are in the wall? Uh -huh. Okay, you see how that pipe is right there? Okay. And then you see that void? Yeah. Okay, so there's a space between the cabinet and the wall. Okay. Okay, back there, they all, it's a harborage site. They're going to love being back there. So the idea is how do we, we either have to treat or seal? Well, if you look, there's a drywall. If the drywall is open, they can go then behind the drywall. So mm -hmm. if we're putting chemical out here and they're hiding back there, and you're putting chemical on the floor like a traditional service, yeah. how are you going to kill what's back there if they're here? But, but now they're, do they are coming from outside? Or they are? They're all coming from outside. They found a way in the structure outside somewhere in the, in the wall oh. uh, through, through an opening in the tile, through an opening somewhere. There's okay. an opening, in, there's a pipe opening. Uh, they found their way in and then they start over the years finding their way in and they start breeding and this is a process that could take a year 15 months two years and all of a sudden it starts to become apparent it didn't happen overnight okay so so most people the, the, the in case this case I'm seeing evidence of what co possibly could be American cockroach so you have a little bit of droppings uh, from what appears to be American cockroach and so so sorry Frank where are the droppings it, what we're looking over here is looking at little things like this. Oh, shoes. Okay, so that's, those are little things that, that we're looking at that it's evidence somewhere. There, there are droppings in the back. So you little bit of, it's not, it's mild. It's not very, there's not many, but they're there. Um, so. Now, the, the, the adults, because uh, during the day I don't see anything. So the adults, uh, when I have some nightmares, I see some adults uh, at night. Typically, most insects are going to come out at night. Okay. So, you know, German roaches are notorious for only coming out at night. If you see them during the day, that's a really bad problem. It's a, the problem has gotten super bad. Gotcha. But with American roaches, you could see them during the day wandering around, uh, you know, going out. But typically, you're going to see most of the insects at night. Ants, you're going to see them most active at sundown. They're on the circadian rhythm, just like we are. So they go out and forage at night. Typically, so most insects will forage at night or forage very early in the morning. So that sunrise to sunset plays a role in their life too. So we're looking, so this is your typical problem. This is where most of your problems in, in, are going to be in a kitchen and a bathroom because they have three things that they need. There's water, there's harborage, and there's food available. What type of food they are looking for? It depends on the insect. So in, in, in some insects it's going to be protein. Other insects is going to be carbohydrates. Other insects is going to be oils. Other insects is going to be sugar, glucose, okay. and different types of glucose. In the case of the roaches, are looking for the uh, uh, the roaches protein. are actually looking more for proteins, oils, and and decomposed matter. So if you've got a sinkerator, yeah, and you and that in there is going to have decomposed matter. So when they come out at night, they have something to eat. It's in there. Gotcha. They found what they wanted. They're in the sewer system. So if, you, if you're, this right here, look at right here, Eric, come down here with me. Yep. This is a common problem. See this P-trap? Uh -huh. That's a U-trap. Okay, this U-trap serves a purpose to keep the odors from the sewers 
to coming into your house. It's full of water. Yeah. What happens, you leave for three to four days. The temperature in the house is in the 80s. Yeah. It'll dry. Roaches are easily going to come in through the sewer system because they're in the sewer system. Hmm. So they're going to come into your house through your pipes and you leave for a week. You're, people leave for vacation for a couple of weeks and they say, I found roaches in my house. I found dead roaches. How did they get in? That's how they got in. The pat dried out and they came in. So how, how, how we can handle that? I mean, you need to run the water? Or right. Or if if water? you're going to be going on vacation, you either need to make sure you put a cap on them uh. and seal it and so that the roaches can't come out. In the case of your bathtubs and your sinks, they have that little um, uh, vent to allow for overflow. Okay. And you're going to have to seal that overflow because they'll make it through the overflow too. So, so yeah, toilets are a little bit hard. They can still go through water. Roaches can swim. Oh, wow. So they'll still go, but it makes it a lot harder. It's, it, that's an easy access point. So those are things that people need to look at in their home that, hey, that pee trap dries out, if, and you're going to notice it every single time, especially homes that have septic tanks over sewers because there's hundreds of thousands of them in your septic tank. So if you have a septic tank, you're going to have way more occurrences of American roaches, large roaches, in the home than if you have no septic tank. We go in a sewer system and we open up that lid or we pull out the lid, we can usually see them running in there wow. and running across. We can usually spot them outside. So those are the things that people need to know is how do I prevent it is, you know, make sure that if you're going to go on vacation, that's, you know, uh, or somebody's running water. You know, you're somebody coming in and just run the water. People have bathrooms they don't use. They got four bathrooms in the house and they sure. only use three and it never gets used. You start getting problems in there because water isn't running through. You can get flies, small flies, like uh, forehead flies and uh, filth flies to come in through the sewer system because those pee traps are dry and they're in the sewer system. Yeah. So that's how people, how did I get this fly in my home? That it came in through the sewer system. You're not using that bathroom. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna set up and we're gonna start doing the initial service and start walking around and doing the initial service around the house. I'm gonna show you what that entails. Okay, all right. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna put it in places where they're hiding and where we saw them hiding. And it's gonna be like, if you can get around with me over here, underneath, I'm gonna put it like where it can't be seen. So I don't want you know the customer to see it. The roaches will find it. Can you get in there and see it? Where I'm at, where my hand is at? See? Can you get yeah. it? There? All right, so what we're gonna do is basically just squeeze it into that little corner. And we're gonna do the same around in this corner. This is an American roach we're dealing with. They're gonna find it. I'm putting it where nobody can really see much of it and it can always be cleaned out. And plus wherever they saw the activity. All right, so another place. So they prefer the corners, huh? Yeah, they're gonna find it, but it's hidden. So yeah. that, you know, it's not being seen everywhere. It just doesn't look, you know, bad when you open up your cabin and you see bait everywhere. You don't need it. So the other place that I use it um, is easy for them to find it. They're walking around your floors. Well, where else are we going to put it? Well, I'm going to go down here and, and, and see if you can take that camera sideways. I think you can, if you put that camera on the floor, I think you can see it, Eric. Yeah. Look at down here. See down here? Yeah. See, see the, let me, let me see if I can shoot my light on there. Um, my other light. All right, so you see that little crack in there? There's a little crack, there's a little void. I think you can see it. Yeah, you can see it right there. You're gonna see when I put it in. Yeah. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna yeah. stick it in that hole. It's not gonna be seen. See, Henry, look down there. Where I stuck it, if you go on, you gotta turn your face upside down. That's a void, right? Yeah, oh, it's a void, sure. so there's a little crack. So they're gonna be in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it where they're gonna be and where they can get it. So that it's not seen. And I'm gonna stick it in there. And I'm gonna it's do one about every two feet. So there is no reason to remove that, that, that piece of wood? And no, there's no need to modify anything. And we're going to just put it in there where it is. I'm going to take a little, uh, give me a little paper here. I accidentally hit the, uh, and then we can just wipe this excess off that I, ac right, yeah, that I yes. accidentally hit it. Yeah. So you're creating a grid here. And my wife is going to be very happy. Yeah, she's not going to see it. She's not going to know it's there. If I don't say anything, nobody will know it's there. Kids are not going to touch it. They're not going to stick their hands in that void. And the product is going to solidify. Uh, yeah, it eventually become hard and become useless. Yeah. It's not going to be useful. A couple of weeks is, is the, the time frame that you have 
for being able to do this. So this is one that the application has to be every... every, every well, what, once it, the problem is solved, you don't really need to apply anymore. You know, we're, we're doing IPM, so we're monitoring so that if, if it, it, once we get control, you know, we're yeah. done together. You know, about two feet, you know, about a pea-sized drop, about the size of a pea, in that crack, in that hole, is what you really are looking for. So this one has a wide gap, which is actually advantageous to us for the service. So in this one, I have three drops in about 36 inches of cabinet, all right? And there's a little, a little cap. So there's not much. I got some cabinet around this side. I'm going to come around here. I'm going to put it in that hole. This one is a lot bigger, Eric. So go under here. I'm going to put a little flashlight. And you can see that that's a big gap right there. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's about over a quarter of an inch. So we're going to stick it in there. So it would be good to replace the piece of wood? No, you just, I mean, it's part of the cabinetry. It's, you know, yeah. the, the way they designed it, the manufacturer designed it. You know, you're not going to be modifying the entire house for a problem that isn't really a big problem. So sometimes habitat modification is required. In this case, I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm going to come over here, do the same thing, put a little bit about a pea sized drop in the hole. I always like to put it in the hole. I don't like to put it exposed outside. So we're going to do that. That's good. We've got, you know, three runs there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply it with our BNG bulb duster. This is where this becomes handy. Where we have places that we want to get into. That's granular. This is a granular. So I got this little hole right here that I can stick it in and I can't get underneath a lot of these places. All right. So what I'm going to do is tilt it over a little bit and you can hear it going back there. It has to be placed in the void. That's a void. This is a void. It's that space between the floor and the floor of the cabinet and the floor that we're sticking this product in. Another place you can apply it is, you know, something that isn't going to be moved like the washer and dryer. So how much of the product are you going to apply? I mean, well, it, you only need very little. You can hear it going through. That's more than enough. If the roach is back there, they're going to find it. Remember I told you it's advantageous, all right, for for us to have this problem because it allows us to go where the roach is to be able to put it. So we're going to stick it in here in this hole under here. He's like, you guys are still here? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so. I'm messing in the house. Hey guys. Hey, hey, hey. Perfect. Okay, well, we've got that hole that I said it was advantageous to have it. This is where it comes handy. So you can see if I can if I can squeeze it, you can see the product in there. Yeah. See in the little hose? Yes. So it's basically just squeezing in there. So about four or five puffs. Doesn't need too much. We're using micro dosages. Uh, uh, actually, we're not going to move it. Uh, we don't need to move it. We if there's a problem there, we're going to use a third product that we can use inside appliances. And we're going to use a third vein called. And this is why I wear my knee pads because we're constantly on our knees. This job isn't about spraying. This job is about seeking and destroying. So what we do is we can go inside a place like this refrigerator where we can't, you know, we can't get to it. We could probably remove the front screen. There's insects in the back. So we can remove this in here. As you can see, there's always dirt, there's stuff. But we can take it and we can just puff it into the voids. If there's a roach in there, the roach is going to find it. There's no need for us to be putting product everywhere in the house. So also, see that see that little tiny hole where we couldn't stick the hose in there, we couldn't stick the, anything in there where that void is? Well, guess what? We can use it in there. You don't need too much. Just a little puff is enough. You don't need to put a ton of this product out. We're going to go back around the kitchen. Let's go back the other way. That's right. This is a dust. So this is a dust bait. So we're using three different baits to deal with this problem. It allows you to put it. It's a dust, yes. Um, so we can use it anywhere. There's a void, a crack and crevice. We're putting it back there. We're going back across the kitchen. So you're using like a three different modes of action over there. We're using three modes of actions with three different palettes of, of taste. 
So if they don't prefer one thing, they'll prefer the other. So all to, one product alone, the mistake people make is they use one chemical, one product, thinking that's going to get the control. You've got to deal with what the insect is going to want to eat, and sometimes you don't know if they're changing their palates. They could go out and prefer one thing one day and another thing the other. So now we've got, you know, this product will last in there, could last up to two years, actively working. The gel bait is going to work for two weeks. The granular bake is going to work between four and six months. Little disc, the product is in here. And what we do is we take... The, put the little glue source, we're going to put it somewhere in the cabinet. Now the, uh, the, the thing with Gentrol is it actually spreads all over the house. The hormone will spread. It's not a liquid, it's not, so we, we, we take it right here. And, and that's it. And this is good for about three months, especially for roach control, ant control, uh, beetle control. And we can put it in one location. So we're going to put it in one spot. So, it's so, it's so uh, one, one second. And uh huh. And so why this is labyrinthic type of structure you have over there? It basically just has a little, uh, uh, the liquid is in a capsule. Yeah. And then it has this little cotton uh, fiber material where the chemical is just going to spread across so that it can volatize out. Okay. So that's all it's going to do. It's just going to come out. It, the insect is not going to be attracted to that. They're not going to go there. They're not going to eat it. It basically is a hormone that is now in the environment. So it's a vol volatilized. It volatilizes in the yeah. environment, yes. Gotcha. But because we are not, we don't have that, IGRs are considered very safe, and they're an alternative to using a synthetic pesticide. Mm, sorry, insect growth regulator. An insect growth regulator. Okay. Because we don't have the hormone, it doesn't affect us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the advantage of it. It only affects, the, and it only affects really the molting stage because this is a hormone mimic. It mimics the growth. There's another type of IGR which is a chitin synthesis inhibitor which damages the chitin, the exoskeleton of the insect, so they can't, it produces a hormone that doesn't allow them to create chitin. Gotcha. And they can't create a new exoskeleton, so when they go from one stage, they leave their body, try to create a new body, they can't. This is why it does it this way, it's just a, a, a more natural way of trying to control something than trying to put a chemical to kill it when you can't find it. But you need to use it when the, when the environment is closed. You can use it anywhere because it's going to spread no matter what. What they found with uh, Gentrol, which is, is, is hydroprene, uh, these products just basically travel. Okay. So basically the hormone is just going to spread naturally throughout the whole house and you need to put it in its point source and you put it in one place. I like putting it in the kitchen because here's where we have the majority and it'll get concentrated. It usually within about 100 square feet. And this is good for roaches and ants also? Or it, it, a, lot, a lot of the IGRs will affect ants. Remember, if they have, it, it won't affect ticks because ticks are arachnids and they don't have juvenile hormone. So if the insect doesn't produce a juvenile hormone, it doesn't affect them. But if the insect does produce a juvenile hormone, then it affects them. And most of the insects that we have, like the beetles, the roaches, the ants, produce juvenile hormone gotcha. to, to, to be able to molt. So that's, that's one of the advantages. That's one of the products we use. So far, we haven't uh, sprayed a single thing, so, All right, so we don't need to remove the stove. So there's glass, but there's a good sign. You know why? There's no dead roaches, meaning there's no big problem. You would usually find a lot of dead roaches back here. So what do we do in a situation where we want to know what's happening? Well, we're going to monitor for it. All right, so this is what is known as a, a mouse or an insect monitor. It can be used as both. This one's made by Bell Labs. I like this product. Um, it's got a nice white surface. You basically peel this off, and that's tacky. So any insect that's here is going to get attached. It's, it works two ways. You, one, you catch the insect. If you catch it, uh, you don't need to use a chemical to kill it. The second thing is you're monitoring. You know what you have in the home uh, so that you're able to say, okay, we have this problem now. We know because it got trapped in here. Insects have habits, and they're going to move. If we want to make it attractive to American roaches, we can take our, our Niban or our boric acid bait and we can put it on the board. And you can put it all around the edges. Um, you know, University of Florida has done a lot of tests with this. Philip Kohler has done a lot of work with this of catching and, and attracting uh, and getting them to eat it. Um, you know, the good news. Yeah, so th this is the advantage of using Nadaiba. It doesn't have to be put in a void. It can be put in an open area like this. And we're basically going to just set it in the back. So when we do now our inspection, and we do our monitoring, we do our inspection, we can see what's back there. 
mm. uh, and what's been happening. So we, we're constantly knowing when we're doing our inspection, that, that's our eyes and ears when we're not here. Customer says, I haven't seen anything. Doesn't mean because, yeah, they haven't seen anything. All right, so that's done. So pretty much, right now, this is the service we're doing for droches in the home. There's nothing else we need to do. Mm -hmm.